The World Health Organization estimates that one-third of the world's population is either overweight or obese, and that amounts to some big health problems. Researchers at the University of Wyoming see a way to prevent weight gain in individuals, even if they are unable to alter their diets by resisting high-fat foods. This help comes from hot peppers, or more specifically, their active component capsaicin. Dr. Baskaran Taigarujan leads this effort. He's here to tell us about capsaicin and his research. Is it okay if I call you Dr. Baski instead of murdering your name every time I talk sure. to you? Sure. You could call me Baski. I'm born as Baski, so not a Dr. Baski, so okay. no problem. So, Dr. Baski, you are engaged in some really fascinating research, and I understand that the um, the component of the, the hot peppers, this cap capsation, it helps to prevent weight gain even though someone is ingesting fat? How exactly does that work? Okay. Generally, if you see uh, uh, when we ingest fat or anything, carbohydrate, the energy, excess energy that we take is stored as a, a white fat. And we always expend energy by burning the fat through our brown fat. When we are all born, when we were children or when we were infants, we had lots of brown fat. But as we age, the brown fat levels go down in our body. And we start, as we eat more of these high fat food, we start accumulating a lot of the white fat. So there is an imbalance between these two. So what capsaicin does is, when we take these uh, capsaicin chili peppers, they induce the genes that are expressed in the brown fat specific genes and proteins in the white fat so that they induce the conversion of the white fat into brown fat. So in simpler terms, the stored energy is now better expended. So the release of energy from fat is pretty high and we lose weight. So that is the whole concept that we discovered using mouse model of obesity. So what have you learned from the mice? So what we learned from mice is that if I can feed the mouse with high fat diet, they keep gaining weight. And if we feed the mouse with high fat diet and capsaicin, they are prevented from gaining weight. So I'm not altering their high fat rich diet taking ability. What I am altering there is a better expendability of the energy so that the mice can spend more energy, their metabolism is high. So even if they take so much of high fat diet, they don't gain weight. So this is what the mice have taught us based on the research projects that we have done now. So our next step is to take it from the mouse to the human. But you know, or at least you strongly sense that it works the same way with people. Yes, our data comes from a very scientific, a logical idea here because in the same, in, in similar mouse model, we knock down the receptor in which, uh, that is necessary for the activity of capsaicin. So in those mice, capsaicin did not prevent weight. So this suggests that a particular receptor is important for capsaicin to act. And such a mouse is available commercially. We could buy it from Jackson Lab and do the work. So, so we have a scientific background that shows that capsaicin causes this effect by activating a particular receptor in the body, which is popularly called as a capsaicin receptor, or TRPV1 is the abbreviated form of the receptor. And that receptor is needed for the protective effect of capsaicin against diet-induced obesity. And we express those receptors throughout our body in the nerve endings, as well as in our adipocytes. So capsaicin should work in human, no different from mice. It's the potency or the intensity of the capsation. In other words, if you just eat a lot of peppers in your diet, you may not be able to achieve the same ends. Exactly, because the quantity of the pepper doesn't uh, matter. The quality of capsaicin that we take matter. So our studies significantly differ from all other studies previously done in a fact that we fed the mice with pure capsaicin, which did not have any other uh, uh, products of the chili pepper except pure capsaicin. That we fed at a dose of uh, 0.01 percentage, which is 10 milligrams per 100 grams. 
and mice significantly, not only prevented the weight gain, significantly even altered the weight loss in the mice. So it, it does um, trigger weight loss in addition to preventing gain. Exactly. So wh how we span the, the, the plan, the experiment is that we fed the mice for until 20 weeks with high fat diet. And then we introduced capsaicin in diet. So the mice started losing weight. So what's the big picture here? How will this hopefully help human beings and their health problems? One thing direct is that, okay, there, there's some data that we have not uh, published, but we are now working more on it, is that capsaicin not only uh, decreased the body weight, but it also decreased the other complications associated with obesity, like high blood pressure and also hyperglycemia. So the blood sugar levels and uh, hypertension that are increased in the obese mice were controlled by capsaicin. So what we think is that, if we as humans start including chili pepper rich diets or more importantly capsaicin rich diet in a standardized format, we will be able to expand our energy better and also postpone the complexity of the metabolic diseases. Can I go to some drugstore and get this over the counter? You could get over the counter but you won't get a proper quality of the capsaicin because they use this, the chili peppers come with all shapes and sizes and colors. So the pepper doesn't matter. If you see uh, jalapenos or if you see habanero peppers, they all have different uh, heat units or levels of capsaicin. So we have to take the pure capsaicin at a very low dose that is sufficient to activate the thermogenesis in the body rather than just taking a chili pepper or a pepper capsule. You're doing some type of um research which involves a targeted approach that mm -hmm. involves wearing a belt. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. The idea what we thought about it, how to deliver capsaicin to people. So one major thing is that we all are uh, very conventionally, we are uh, worried about capsaicin. It's going to burn our tongue. It's going to uh, cause some unpleasant feeling. Mm. So we wanted to take a, a, a shortcut route for this. So the first thing, the data that supported our concept is that I told you the adipocytes, the white adipocytes, the, the tummy fat that we accumulate, those cells express TRPV1, the capsaicin receptor. So what we thought of doing is to deliver capsaicin directly into those cells. And then in order to localize them in a particular area, wear a magnetic belt externally. So for this, the challenge was, how am I going to magnetize capsaicin? So we took a very simple approach. So my basic degree in pharmacy helped me to bring this idea onto our lab bench. Okay. So we created some magnetic nanoparticles and we suspended capsaicin over the magnetic nanoparticles and then we coated the whole magnetic nanoparticle with capsaicin with a polymer. So when I say polymer, what, what polymer I'm talking about? I'm talking about a polymer that has uh, the ability to release capsaicin in a slow and sustained fashion rather than giving all of the capsaicin at once. So as I told you before, we don't need a high amount of capsaicin. We need certain amount, but in a very slow and steady fashion. So the polymer releases the capsaicin from its dose formulation pretty slow and steady rate. The steady rate that we are talking about is the key. So we are now showing that in mice. We inject the mice with these magnetic nanoparticles and we just perform all the toxicity study in these mice, whether the nanoparticles cause a problem or the mice have any reaction. Fortunately, so far, we tested it in a group of 12 mice and we couldn't see any mice with any toxicity. But we are also performing those studies in our lab now. Very, very exciting. And um, I look forward to following all of your progress. Dr. Baskey, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. And keep eating a lot of spicy food. Yeah.